All right, let's sing the first one together. All right, stand before. Stand before kings and queens of nations. Child of God, you will go and save the world. Walk the path, trusting in God's covenant. You're the ones to fulfill the covenant dream. in God's coming. You're the one to fulfill this covenant dream. Oh, the dream God gave you. One day will come true. Enjoy, enjoy this dream he gave. Just have to wait. You're the right man walking on the path of this covenant journey and by the word taking it slowly step by step and giving thanks to God for his grace lifting up the songs of his praise you will become the remnant summits of the same one two three four you will become the summit of this age. Although you are tiny, although you guys may be lacking, although you guys may not be the smartest, you guys are the most spiritually wise individuals, okay? You guys are the ones with the gospel. You guys are the ones as the spiritual summits, okay? I am tiny and young. Let's stand up. Tarang is going to come and help me today. You can like triple axle your way through there. You can like jump. It could work. Here we go. I am, I am tiny and young. 
So much with you. I'm a spiritual doctor, yeah. I'm a spiritual ambassador, yes. Oh, I like that Christ. Here we go. I am tiny and young, but I work hard. I forgot Michael. I am tiny. So much with you. I'm a special dog. Yeah, I'm a special ambassador. Cry. Oh, we can do better. I'm a. I'm a special watch with you. I'm a third floor. Yeah, I'm a special ambassador. Spiritual watchman, you. I'm a spiritual doctor, yeah. I'm a spiritual ambassador. and say to that person, I am so happy to see you.
Hansa, who did you say it to? You're only happy to see Benji? Look, look at Sarang. Look at Sarang in her eyes. And say, I'm so happy to see you. Is it awkward? Benji, make eye contact with Lydia. Lydia, look back. Okay. You guys are so awkward. I'm so happy to see you. All right, let's sing the next one together, okay? Le what can wash away my sins? All right, let's clap our hands. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me one as no. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me one and again in that day I believe Jesus is here and his blood makes me whiter than snow I believe Jesus is here and his blood makes me whiter than snow there is cleansing and healing for all who wash in the life Blood. There is perfect deliverance and joy to be we had in this world through the blood. I, I believe Jesus is here and his blood makes me whiter than snow. I believe Jesus is here and his blood makes me whiter than snow. Then we'll march in his name till we come. 
and is bidding to cease from the vine, and our Savior shall welcome us home to the mansion of glory and light. Heavenly Jesus said, and his blood makes me whiter than snow. Let's sit down. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in it. This is my story, and this is my song, praising, praising my risen King, my Savior, all the day long. I trust in God, my Savior. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. The Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust in him. That's why I trust. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard. And he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust in him, 
that I sought, I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust in Him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the One who will never fail. He will never fail. And I trust. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never Our remnant, Caitlin, will come up and pray for us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Help us to have the three concentrations and hold on to 777. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. one voice. Let's confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God's absolute plan to save everything. God gave us the word. He's going to give us future, peace, hope, plans to make us prosper. So let's call on him, pray, seek God with all of our heart. What is it? RCA message. You guys remember that symbol? I think it was in Chicago. It was like one heart, whole heart continuation it was a uh, in the heart there was a one for one heart how about whole heart the heart was filled in and then continuation it was a heart with that 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 to continue very creative also very creative was your homework assignments which only two people did Three people did. I'm going to show you pictures. It's so creative. Very colorful. Shading. Bolding. Masking. Everything. It's almost it's a masterpiece. Kind of like what we did um, during VBS with our painting. So beautiful. I was very surprised and impressed. I promise to restore everything. He says it. He said it. May you listen to God's word through Teacher Jinster. Don't listen to me. Listen to what is God's word today? Because we're going to learn about Abraham's test. You shouldn't listen to me. I'm not even a pastor. I shouldn't be up here. We have new pastor. Why can't he do this? Maybe he's busy. Pray for a new pastor. To replace me? Because I'm not pastor. I shouldn't be doing this. Or maybe I should. I 
to God. May we restore covenant essence. Genesis chapter 3, and then solution. What's solution to Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3.15. What was solution for uh, Nephilim? Genesis chapter 6, 14. What about uh, slavery? What was the answer to slavery? No, Exodus 3.18. These are core Bible verses. Older ones, you should know these. How about to captivity? What was the Bible verse? Answer to captivity. Are you guys paying attention during like all the years you've been here? No, Isaiah 7, 14. How about colonization? The answer is Matthew 16, 16. What the heck? You guys just come here and just watch, stare off blankly. Maybe we imprint covenant. Yeah, it's just Christ. Offspring of the woman, blood sacrifice, ark, Emmanuel, Christ, blood sacrifice. Let's restore Lord and Master, your daddy, and your sense of identity. Especially on the Lord's Day, like worship today, right? Let's focus and pray to God to our master, and then he'll restore our sense of identity. People can't do it. I could tell you all the time. Your teachers can tell you all the time. You're a remnant. You're going to do 237, 5,000. That just becomes burdensome to you. Or maybe, maybe not. However, if you pray to God, whenever you're in problems, conflicts, crises, God will restore your sense of identity in you, in your heart. He'll strengthen you. Do you feel strengthened when you come to church? Or, F, or at the end of the day, you're exhausted and you want to leave, stressed out. Oh, I can't wait to get out of here. Let's restore a sense of identity before you leave. God changes absolutely impossible to possible. Focus on Jesus Christ today. Restore the church. Jesus called us out of darkness. Restore worship because our spirit needs to be revived. Three courtyards. May you be 237 Healing Summit. Do people come to you? Are you influencing 237? Are you Summit? Summit is not just doing stuff. Enjoy manual. Little Joseph enjoyed a manual. And then God used him. Little David, he enjoyed a manual when he was little. And then when he was ready, God used him by giving him Goliath. Does that mean if we're enjoying Emmanuel, something's going to happen? What if it doesn't? Does that mean we're not enjoying Emmanuel? Ah, so many questions. House of prayer. Sometimes you forget to pray, right? Like we come to church and we forget to pray. Like sincerely pray. That's why, was it, English service? We have time of prayer. That short time to actually pray and focus and receive strength. The deep breathing time, that's time of prayer. Right? We forget to pray. And then we realize, oh, sorry, God. I should have prayed. Hold on to what's absolute. Michael? Five absolutes. <sighs> Journey, goal, plan, covenant. 
Uh-oh, he's forgetting one. No. Sovereignty. You know it's in order, right? Sovereignty. Plan. Covenant Journey Goal. Acronym? AP? APCJG? Try to come up with an acronym to remember. To save everything. Today's message is Abraham's test. Dun, dun, dun. Abraham's test. To sacrifice his son Isaac, whom he loved so much. If you were waiting like a hundred years to have a son, God says, all right, give him to me. Would you be able to do it? Maybe. But there's a reason God gave this test. So we could, well, in, God, in God's love letter, the Bible, that whole, this whole incident is about the ram because it's about Christ, right? So we can learn more about Christ through this incident. How about Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? We say it all the time. They were in the fiery furnace. How does, what does that have to do with Christ? What do you think? Anybody able to make a connection? Older, older remnants? Three friends in the fiery furnace come back out. Remind you of anything? Yeah. No, Christ. Christ died, was buried three days, and came back. Connection? How about Jonah? Jonah in the belly of the whale. How long was he in there? Three days. Christ? Right? Everything has to do with Christ in the Bible. All right, Genesis chapter 2, I mean 22, 17 to 19. These days during messages, it's all about three courtyards, 27, healing summit. Yay, 5,000. Don't lose hold of Christ, okay? We're holding on to the mission too much instead of essence, Christ. This essence, Christ, fundamental foundation has to be there in order to do everything else that's coming out in messages these days. So let's not lose hold of Christ. Oh, it's up here. If you're having a hard time looking it up, should we? I'll read this first, and then you read 18, and then we read 19 together. Uh, I will surely bless you, and I will multiply your descendants like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. Who's the offspring here? Christ, Jesus. Three, two, one. Abraham went back to his servants, and they got up and set out together for Beersheba. And Abraham settled in Beersheba. Beersheba? Beersheba. I want to go there. Beersheba. Beer. Mm. Question of the day. Am I obeying God? Am I obeying God? Let's think about it. everything you do, do you obey God? In America, there was a big movement. It was called WWJD. What would Jesus do? Before, before anybody did anything, they thought, what would Jesus do? Am I obeying God? Let us review Abraham's start. He was told to leave his father's household. Father's household? 
So I need 44. Leave Satan. And go to the land of Canaan, which is where Christ is going to be. Abraham became father of faith. God gave him the covenant. Through Christ, all will be blessed. Set out with Sarai, his, his wife, and the nephew Lot. Worshipped wherever he went. Received these five blessings. Covenantal, fundamental, representative, commemorative, irresistible. When there was a famine in Egypt, he went. I mean, when there was a famine in the land of Canaan, he left for Egypt, which is, Egypt symbolizes world. And the world thought Sarai was beautiful, because the world only judges by outer appearance and results. They, they saw how beautiful Sarai was, brought her to Pharaoh. However, you can't mess with children of God. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Of course, God was on Abraham's side. It was a disease. And he left with all the goodies. Was this only last week? Last week, Abraham's resolution. Became a wealthy man, pitched his tent, worshipped. However, there was conflict between him and Lot because he wasn't supposed to bring Lot in the first place due to his unbelief. So there was conflict. And then they split. Abraham's like, choose the better land. I'll go to the other one. You go to the north, I go to the... I, you go to the east, I go to the... You go to the left, I go to the... You go top, I go... You go 270 degrees, I go. So he chose Sodom and Gomorrah, wicked land, sinned greatly against the Lord. Abraham repented of his sin, of losing all of the covenant. And God reestablished the covenant with him. Reminded him, I'll bless you. All nations will be blessed through you and your offspring. Everywhere you step, I'll give it to you. He pitched his tent, worshiped again. Sin of disobedience. When did answers begin to come? When he obeyed. So he learned his lesson, right? So let's talk about the test that he goes through today. Before we Discuss that. There are two types of tests. There's one from that guy, Satan. And then there is from God. Satan wants to give us tests to tempt us. To tempt us. Eat this fruit. You could become just like God, knowing good and evil. Come on, bow down to me. I'll give you everything. Sell your soul to me. But God gives us tests to test our faith. Satan gives us te tests to destroy us. God gives us tests to save us. Satan wants to tempt you with physical things, self-centeredness, success-centeredness. But God wants to save us by making us hold on to Christ. Right? Satan gives us trials God wants us to level up, right? Abraham leveled up while he was in Egypt through that incident, right? Through the famine. Who else leveled up? 
if Daniel and his three friends just bowed down to the huge statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, what could they have gained? All the remnants? If they bowed down, what would they have gained? Yeah, Manny? What would they have gained? He's like, what? Yeah, Benji, what do you think they would have gained if they just bowed down to the statue of the king? Money, prestige, position. But then they didn't. They were thrown into a lion's den and a fiery furnace. Did God save them? Did it help them level up? Yeah. God gives us tests so we can level up and become stronger. My teams didn't do too good yesterday in playoffs. We got eliminated. And they were crying. The girls were crying. The boys, they don't care. They, they stink anyways. So we took group picture. The boys are smiling. Group picture for the girls. Everyone's crying. <laughs> I was the only one trying to smile. But they're so upset because they give their heart and soul to win their final game of the season. Last year, as eighth graders, they were so upset and crying. But then what did the coach and the parents tell the kids? It's okay. It's part, it's part of the game. It just makes you stronger, right? If you lose, does that make you stronger? Yeah, right? Like, it's not about winning. It's about your character. You become stronger. You're, now, look at you. You're a more confident young lady. Because I knew them for, since third grade. Now they're eighth grade. They're young ladies now. So confident. I was so impressed. This super nice girl, she's so kind ever since third grade. She has a very pure heart. And during the game yesterday, she was like pushing the other girls. Like, oh, yeah. Look at her. Look how much she's, she's grown. And then you, Remnants, too. Right? Me and Pastor So, we were talking. And Pastor's like, man, the Remnants at our church, they're so spoiled. They didn't grow up facing hardships and suffering. They're so weak. <laughs> right? Because... We had lots given to us. And then, but then us, even though we're young, we grew up facing like racism at school. And we had to fight. All I remember in preschool, kindergarten, first through third grade, is standing up for myself and fighting. And then God brought me to Holy Nation. Like up to fifth grade, racism, right? Lots of Mexican, the Mexican people, they make fun of you. Even in junior high, you guys hear, like, have you ever heard racist Asian comments towards you? You do, right? This one with the eyes, chink, chink, right? Different words like that. In Spanish, they have different words too. You know, is a chino, stuff like that. Do you guys always get picked up for school? Like, ride or take bus? Yeah. We had to walk. <laughs> we had to walk. Scared because there's eighth graders on the way to on the way home, and they're smoking. I have to walk home with my little sister. Little things like that. You guys had a good, huh? You guys didn't know. Well, I hope you face more problems, conflicts, and crises so you can become more tough and level up. So Pastor, Pastor says, like, man, I want to take these remnants to, like, those areas of Chicago where it's kind of hard. Right? So you could experience it in 237. Even Jesus was tempted, right? 
He's Ash Wednesday started on Wednesday, right? Where they people they fast. Jesus fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. And when he's physically weakest, that's when Satan came and said, Hey, come on, obey me. Tell this stone to turn into bread. What's your favorite bread at Banchiki's bakery? I like the one that's like, it looks like an acorn. And it's like white chalky bean paste inside. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a circle. It looks like an acorn. It's like brown. Right? You know what I'm talking about? The one with the sesame seeds on top? Uh-oh. Mm. No. It's like a white inside. Anyways. Would, Satan's like, make the stone into bean paste bread. What did, what did Jesus say? How did he pass the test? How did he level up? He said, people don't live by eating bread alone, but by... Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Passed the test. Level up. Like Mario. What does Mario do? Yeah, he eats a disgusting mushroom and then... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Next test. Satan's like, hey, obey me. Just jump off because the Bible says... Uh, your, your feet won't strike the ground because angels are going to protect you. I'm trying to test God. And what did Jesus say? How do you pass the test? You should not put the Lord your God to test. How dare you? I'm trying to use God's word against me. Level up. Final test. Satan showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Which kingdom would you want? The universe kingdom? I want Marvel Universe. Oh, that would be cool. Rome? Rome's a pretty cool kingdom. Oof. Animal kingdom? Just bow down once. Just kneel once to me. And then what did God, what, how did Jesus pass the test? You shall worship the Lord your God only and serve him only. Get out of here. Pass the test. Let's pass the test. Satan's going to try to tempt us. Just like Abraham. Abraham was tested. Sacrifice Isaac. That's a test. Even Job. God and Satan are like, Satan's like, God, Job's only worshiping you because you give him all these physical things, like a big family, livestock, money, children. Take it all away and see what Job's going to do. And God's like, all right. So in one day, God took away his family, killed all his animals, and even his health. He had like sores all over his body to the point that he was getting rocks he was scratching himself, and his wife abandoned him, cursed him, cursed his God. His friends even betrayed him. It's like, dude, bro, God's cursing you. You probably did something bad, man. Get it together. And his friends betrayed him. But Job remained faithful to God alone. And then in the end, what happened? He got better two times more blessing. Now he has smooth baby skin. What else? Double his family. Double all his livestock. Look, this is his friends cursing and ridiculing him. But then in the end, he was blessed. Because he obeyed and remained faithful to God. All right. Let's talk about Abraham. Abraham's test, this was just part of the process to eternally imprint in his heart the covenant. So there's Mr. Abraham. Sometime afterward, God put Abraham to the test, saying to him, Abraham. He answered, I'm right here, Lord. Here I am. I guess back then God spoke 
two people. Abraham's like, I'm right here. Kind of opposite of what like Ab- what Adam and Eve did, right? What did Adam and Eve do when God called them? They hid. Take your son, God said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Because what are you supposed to do for burnt offering? You're supposed to put a lamb, goat, bull, sheep. I don't know about birds. Birds. But you're supposed to sacrifice animal. But Abraham, God told Abraham, burn your son. Oh. Isn't that crazy? But what, what, what did Abraham say? His one and only son. Whom he loves. And Abraham's like, yes, Lord, right away. (laughs) What? And it's not like Isaac was a pain in the butt, right? If if there's like kids who are a pain in the butt, always talking back, never listening to the parents, then Abraham would maybe be like, oh, yes. Or maybe not, because father's love is really deep. But he said, yes, Lord. So Abraham got up early the next morning, saddled his donkey, and took along two of his servants and his son Isaac. He split the wood for burnt offering, and then he set out to the place God designated, which is what? Moriah. He got his servants, probably the servants that he got from Egypt, right? After that, all that fiasco. Saddled his donkey, chopped up some wood. Why do you, why do you, why do you, why does he need wood? Because it's a burnt offering. Paying attention. And his son, Isaac. Wake up, Isaac. It's time to go. I'm sure Abraham didn't tell him that. It's time to die. The son would freak out. Ah, mom, dad's crazy. But no, he didn't. On the third day, look, it took three days to travel. Nice nice road trip. Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance, up in the mountains. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. Why do you, why do you think he, Abraham told the servants to stay at the bottom of the mountain? Because if, they, if he takes the servants with them on the mountain and he tries to sacrifice Isaac, what are the servants going to do? No, Lord, no, Master, don't do that, don't do that. And maybe they would have stopped Abraham. So Abraham's like, no, you wait right here. The boy and I will go over there to worship, and then we'll, we'll come back. And the servants are like, oh, okay. Yes, Master. And so they go. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on top of his son. <laughs> here, you carry all this. So, uh, okay, Dad. Okay, thanks, Dad. He himself carried the fire, a torch for burnt offering. And the sacrificial knife. And the two of them walked on together. Maybe they had sandals. Then Isaac's like, wait, Dad, Father, I'm right here, your son. And the fire and the wood is here. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Isaac's like, oh, I know my dad is old. Maybe, maybe he forgot. Uh, dad, I think you forgot something back at home. Uh, the lamb, the most important part. Abraham's like, no, 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 no. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And I was like, oh, okay. And the two of them went on together. Because Jehovah Jireh, know what I'm saying? What does Jehovah Jireh mean? 
<laughs> the Lord who provides. <laughs> All right. When they arrived at the place God had designated, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood, and then he tied up his son and placed him on top of the altar. Isaac's, Dad, Dad, no, what's going on? Isaac's just a kid. He can't fight back. Like, say it was Benji. Do you think, Benji, you could fight back with your dad at this age? No, his dad's like, looks powerful. He has to deal with some tough fellas in the south side. Oh, David, you could, you could take your dad? Oh, challenge accepted. He could put up a pretty good fight, kick and, kick and claw. But then Isaac's just, uh, I'm sure God, he, dad knows what he's doing. And then he took out his, his knife. <laughs> and was about to slaughter his son. Abraham's like, there, there. Maybe covered his eyes. What an obedient young boy. Or, you know, if you're like super in fear, you can't move anyways or say anything. So maybe he was like, it was like that. Or kids, they don't know any better. Right? So they're just waiting. Then, just as he was about to strike, the angel of the Lord stopped him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, no, 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 no. Here I am. Abraham's like, huh. what if he didn't obey the angel? No. Oh, too late. No, but he stopped. Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him, said the angel. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Don't do it. Okay, you passed the test. Congratulations, you passed. Then Abraham looked up and saw behind him was a ram in a thicket. Bush, bush. It was caught by its horns. So he went, took the ram, and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. What do you think the less what, do, what lesson do you think Isaac learned from this? Oh, God provides. And Ram died in my place which represents Christ, Jesus. Yeah, a ram was stuck in the bush. How did they not hear the ram in the first place? Because if it's stuck in the bush, it was probably like moving around. Moo. Meow. Anyways, God provided. Ram was sacrificed. Oh, there's the blood. Ugh. Catch up. And Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. What is it in Hebrew? Jehovah Jireh. I think it's Hebrew. So to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh. I think we're saying it wrong. Jehovah, Yire, Yire. Maybe the J is silent. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time, saying, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your only son, oh, he reestablishes the covenant once again. I will surely bless you. Actually, yeah. Why don't you read it? No, why don't Michael read it? Seahorse? Thanks. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Let's obey God. There was this murder. He's a murderer. And then he keeps seeing this person. 
And the person, nobody else can see this person. And this person keeps telling him to do things. Like, it was a, like, kill that animal. And he went and killed animals. And the parents like, what are you doing? Why did you do that? Who told you to do that? And the, the guy's like, oh, my friend, he did. And they look, no one's there. And this friend kept being with him and telling him what to do when he grew up, too. And then he, he killed many people. Who do you think that person was? Who was he obeying? Like an evil spirit, like a ghost, right? Scary. Let's obey God. Abraham went back to his servants. Right? They were waiting for him. They got up and set out together for Beersheba. And Abraham settled in Beersheba. I think that's actually what Beersheba looks like today. All right. There was a true answer that was prepared for Abraham. True answer that was prepared. All right. Well, a ram was prepared. What does a ram signify? Yes. Jesus Christ. That's, that's an answer. That's the true answer. Died in place of Isaac. Jesus Christ. Because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Look at that. Abraham realized covenant of Christ. And Christ is the true prophet, priest, king. What did Jesus do as a true prophet? There's only one way to meet God. There's no secret like key you have to find in the middle of an island. It's Christ. The way to meet God. He forgave all of our sins, original sin. Yeah, destroy Satan's power or authority. Satan has no more power over us. We just have to pray in Jesus' name and he'll run away. True answer, I'll surely bless you. Make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, sand on the seashore. Not seahorse. That's through Christ. Blessing of world evangelization. How can someone how can someone like us do world evangelization? Little old me, little old you. How can you do world evangelization? How? Thankfully there's social media. Internet? Cool. World evangelization? It's getting more realistic day by day. I will surely bless you, children of God. Through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Through Christ, we're blessed because of Christ. Through Jesus Christ. And eventually through Abraham's family line, Christ did come. If, we, if you are Christ, if we belong to Christ, then we're Abraham's seed. Does that mean Abraham is our great, 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 great grandfather? Like by blood, we're Israelites, we're Jewish? No, we're talking about faith, right? Abraham's our father of faith through Christ. That means we're, Christ is Abraham's seed. And we're heirs, which means we receive inheritance, right? Eternal inheritance according to the promise. All nations will be blessed through you. The kids always say, Stop pointing fingers, Mr. Lee, stop pointing fingers. And I do it even more. I go like this. Yeah. Blessed through you. 
through Christ, the way of salvation. So let's obey. Obey God's word. We're just talking about Christ. This month's theme, 777 prayer, draw a picture, platform, watchtower, antenna. You guys were supposed to literally do this for homework. But we're talking about draw a picture, see the future, plan out, plan out your life. Even though your life's in God's hands, but God gives you assurance about the future, right? May you be platform. May people come to you. Watchtower, Santa's watchman, antenna, broadcast Christ. What else is being broadcasted? Any basketball fans? It's all-star weekend. All-star weekend this weekend. And people watch, right? It's a great platform. People watch. Come and watch. Let's go on. Platform of seven partisans. Watchtower. Seven journeys. Antenna. Seven guideposts. Let's have summit attitude. As remnants who remained in Christ. Pilgrims for Christ. Conquerors through Christ. What shall we do? Edit gospel, God's word. Plan through prayer. Design evangelism, word. God's will. This Friday we talked about doing God's will, right? Design, world evangelization. Three concentrations, which is basically morning, day, and night. In the morning, let's focus on Christ. During the day, focus on Christ and whatever you do. At night, focus on Christ. When you wake up, immediately focus on Christ. When you wake up, sometimes you just, you think about the dream you had. Right? You guys dream last night? I have some weird dreams. I was like a, I was like in a like a restaurant and then I see a bunch of Korean people right, sitting at a table and they're they're reading New Life, New Living book. And they they I'm like, What the where'd you get that book? And I I I, I was like sharing the gospel to them in Korean. What the <laughs> Anyways, thanks, God. I'm evangelizing even with my dreams. During the day, during the day, I like you like forget to pray. It was playoffs yesterday. It was just so, I, I, I like forgot to play, pray before the games. Well, I prayed during the game, but uh, I should have prayed with the team, right? Before we go to sleep, word, word prayer evangelism. Receive strength in the morning. Confirm answers during the day. Receive healing at night. This month, Black History Month. May we have hearts that embrace all cultures. I realize you guys are very racist. I was playing like like a song during our forum time and Bible writing time. And it's, it's like a remake of Wade in the Water, which is like a, a hymnal that the African Americans used to sing during slavery. And then some knuckleheads, they're like making like whipping sounds. And I was very shocked. Wow, this is the kind of these are the kind this is the kind of heart that our remnants have. Think thinking racist things is funny. I don't like that. How are you gonna be two three seven if you're being having racist attitude towards people of different cultures? Let us learn about Maya Angelou. Angelou? 
Angelou, famous poet. I'm sure you'll learn more about her in school. I don't know if she's Christian or not, most likely. Let's find out. She was born in St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. Closest brother, so closest family friend or friend growing up was her older brother. Went to live with grandma. While living with grandma, uncle taught her how to read. Smart girl, loved to read. Favorite thing in the world was books and the stories they told her. Us remnants, we hate books, right? But then back then, they didn't have like equal rights. Girls, maybe, and African Americans, they weren't even allowed to go to school. So reading was so precious to her. Talks about how she got her nickname. There was some, there was a tra traumatic experience that she had when she was little. When she was seven, went back to live with mom. Back then, and then her mother's boyfriend hurt Maya very badly. Maybe some ob abuse, right? Not long after that, she told mom, and then the boyfriend was shot and killed. And Maya thought it was her fault, right? Kids, we think it's our fault, right? Well, I'm not a kid, but <laughs> you kids think it's your fault, right? If something bad happens, oh, something bad happens. It's my fault. It's my fault that he died. And she felt so bad that she didn't speak for the next five years. Can you, just, can you not, talk to him, not talk for the next five years? I can't. I think I could do it. I already do. Except I'm forced to talk when I'm up here. But she felt so bad. Have you ever experienced something like that? Something bad happens and you think it's your fault? It's not your fault, remnants. It's not your fault. We think a family problem takes place and we think, ah, it's my fault. It's not your fault. God's plan, right? God gives us problems, conflicts, crises, because he's training us. It's not your fault if something like that happens. She continued to move around the country, many jobs, worked as a civil rights activist. She worked with Martin Luther King Jr. Wow. And also Malcolm X. And she continued to work for the rights of African Americans and women. Now, she had lots of interests, but her true love was writing. She always worked on and off as a writer, right? She considered herself a poet. I guess there was a turning point. She was at a dinner party, and Maya's like, oh, I love, I love writing stories about my life. And the people at the party encouraged her, yeah, yeah, keep writing. She, he's another person who worked for civil rights. Now Martin Luther King, he's like, no, we have to be peaceful. Don't fight back, right? Let's do it with love. Like yesterday I told the girls, even though they're swearing at you during the game and calling you mean racist things, don't talk back. Because all my girls, they're like, I'm Hispanic. And then we go to play in like Taft High School and all these schools that come, they're all white. So anyways, so Martin Luther King's like, no, don't. And Malcolm X is like, yeah, we should fight back. So that, those are the two different ideas. But anyways, she, she held both. And then she wrote books. And here's one of the poems. I can't, it's, it's too far. But the theme is, no matter what happens, problems, conflicts, crises, still I rise. Nothing can, broke, nothing can bring us children of God down. Still you rise. Don't let anything bring you down. Go check out some of her poems. 
That's over with. I got to get rid of that. That's also over with. Did you guys do Valentine's Day cards? Did you write, Jesus loves you? God loves you? No? Too shy to witness Christ? Huh? Too shy to testify the gospel? <sighs> Shame on you. But we still love you. Jesus loves you. You guys didn't do that? I, that's such a great idea. The little ones, right? Cards. God loves you. Come on, remnants. And your homework. Wow, look at this masterpiece. This, look, this looks like it took days to, to complete. Man, look at that. Wow, look at that masterpiece. I'm sure this took like seven days in a row, three hours a day to complete. That looks longer. Yeah, that looks nice. But these, I mean, they did it. But it looks like, how long do you think it took to, to do that? Like five seconds, right? Because I know their artistic skills. I know their skills. And they put that, and this is the maximum. No, this is, this is their best effort. I don't think so. Anyways, but they did it. So 70%. See that one? A grade? Eighty nine point nine 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 high B. Everybody else? Zero. Should we extend it another day? Another week? No, you're not gonna do it anyways. You guys don't listen to me. Oh rascals. All right, homework this week, different homework. Whenever you have a test, exam, quiz, assessment, just somewhere on the tape, on the paper, put J equals C. Is that too hard? Somewhere on the paper, when you have a quiz, exam, test, assessment, J equals C. Jesus is the Christ. You guys doodle on your tests anyways. Put J equals C. Or if you see the number seven, like seven, 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 whenever you see the number seven anywhere on your assignments this week, Circle it. That's it. Whenever you see the number seven, circle it. Is that too hard? Okay. Do that. Your teacher's going to be like, why are you circling all these sevens? That's my favorite number, Miss Kalamazoo. Let us pray for Laos and Maldives. Nations 21 and 22. 3, 2, 1. Dear God, may you bless Laos and the Maldives. So that the gospel may enter and revive these nations. The disciples arise, shine the light of the gospel, and establish your kingdom there. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen.